So Gabby Agbono has um, um, spiked my attention this mm. weekend, just gone. Um, this is Arsenal's win over Aston Villa. Um, obviously, Gabby being an Aston Villa legend, but also I thought had a bit of a soft spot for Arsenal, but maybe not. Um, earlier on, you heard from Andrew, the Birmingham fan, and um, he called in and basically said he's sick of his wife stealing his food uh, when she doesn't actually want any after saying that. Um, this is how it sounded. Well, the way they celebrated um, at the end of the game, it's like they'd won the Champions League, <laughs> not qual qualified for it. I, I know That's it was just a, sour great. I, I know it was a great result, but the, the the scene from the players and you know we were right behind the fans. It was like they'd won the league, not beating Aston Villa, a team that they should be beating. So um, I think they overdone the celebrations, Arsenal. Okay, there we go. Mm. So basically, we went a bit early on Gabby Ogbonnaho, but um, let me just enlighten you on the situation with Gabby Ogbonnaho. So mm. he thinks that Arsenal celebrating um, against Aston Villa for that win was was an over celebration. Um, but here's the thing that, that I think in in response to that, um, Arsenal are chasing top four at the moment, and this is a club that's been labelled banter FC all season by Jamie O'Hara by the way um, they were bottom of the league at one point um, they have a raft of, of new players that are still bedding in really they have the youngest squad in the league they have the youngest manager in the league as well with no previous experience on his own um, Vin Ivan Kintesian who's the CEO of Arsenal I worked with him last week and asked him about the trajectory of Arsenal and he said they're ahead of schedule um, so that kind of backs up in, in my mind where the club thinks they are and where they actually are realistically at the moment or where they are um, where they want to be so they are ahead of schedule essentially they're, they're banging on the door for top four and that win put a great bit of distance between them and Spurs of course until Spurs beat yes, West Ham at the yeah. weekend but yeah. there is still space between them and um, this is a club at the beginning of the season nobody would have given them a shot at top four nobody at all everybody written them off including myself as an Arsenal fan and I actually wouldn't accept it for a very long part of the season I just didn't think that, that they necessarily had it in them I thought that the teams around them had strengthened too much had too much quality and, and far better resources to allow Arsenal in in that way um, it's a it's a club and a fan base as well that I think for large sways of the last four or five years maybe even six years since we dropped out the Champions League have been quite divided and now they look like a club that are much more unified. If you're not allowed to celebrate your wins, however big or however small <coughs> they are, what's the point in going to football? If you're not allowed to celebrate a goal in a game that you might lose, just in case you lose it, if you're not allowed to celebrate a win in a season that you're going for top four, you may, you might not. Should we just wait until the end of the 38-game season and then celebrate where we are in the league? It doesn't really work like that. They had a clean sheet as well against the team. Aston Villa aren't mugs and they've significantly invested in their own right so it's not like you're saying that we're, we're playing against a team that are bottom of the league or something like that Aston Villa are a good side it's a, a side that we want to be and that we have a little bit of history with as well by the way um, it's a clean sheet in a, in a defence that's been called calamitous that we've now strengthened that's gone well so you have to applaud that too that defence has really pulled together and improved um, just stop penalising people for celebrating at Gabby it's not it's football at the end of the day um, you have to be able to celebrate you have to be able to go to a game and I love that they celebrated that's what Arsenal's all about now is that unified presence but Gabby Agbonho listen don't don't listen to me don't listen to my own argument listen to your own argument it's positive for Aston Villa and what you want to see is that passion yeah, on the side we were talking say. about mm. Oli earlier like just the passion from Gerard on the sideline for the whole game interacting with the fans during the game his celebration for the goal was like you know, you'd want a cup Score final. Score a last minute winner for yeah, Liverpool yeah. in the FA Cup no, final. That, yeah. That's what fans want to see. That's what fans want to see, Gabby, isn't it? People celebrating anything in the league. It doesn't matter whether you've just won the league or you've just won a single game. Fans want to see celebrations. So well done, Gabby Ogbonnahor, for undoing your own argument before you'd even made it. What do you think of that, Ali? I think you've done him like Kipper. That's what I think. <laughs> you've actually set that up and you have searched back and found that argument. However, what I will say... Ali and Laura in another Monday morning agreement. I agree with you. I mean, come on. We're moaning if there's no passion shown between the players and fans and coaches. Come on, that's what the game's all about. I'm all for it. I'm delighted that Arsenal are celebrating in that manner because that is what it's all about. And it's amazing what I said to you, Woodsy. There is something going on at Arsenal. They're anything but the finished article, but they've got a bit about them, you know. 
and obviously Ramsdale didn't play, Leno came in, but you know, you look at the spine of the team, Gabriel White, Partey's playing a bit, the young lads up front, I mean, Saka, Smith Rowe, I'm a massive fan of, Lacazette's been brilliant, by the way, in his leadership, yeah, they've done really, really well, and isn't that amazing, I said to you last week, how sometimes a move can suit both parties, and by that I mean getting rid of Obama Yang. You know what I mean? And because I tell you what, Ali, it's worked out well for him, hasn't it? Well, that's my point. That is my point. It doesn't necessarily, you know, the parting of ways doesn't necessarily mean somebody's got a raw deal or somebody's unhappy. I think at this moment in time, is looking seriously looking as though it was the best thing for both parties. Certainly are still. And the Bamiyang looks as though he's got his, his hunger back and his, his desire back and his, you know, just his, his, his ability to go and play. He scored two goals last night in a, in a Barcelona victory, 4 nothing victory over Real Madrid. So he's doing well. Arsenal are doing well. You know, and it's as I say, it's it's great to see. But no, I must admit, I'm, I'm enjoying Arsenal. You know I'm a massive fan of Tierney. I love him. But they've just got something going. It's and it's one of these things. It will t- it will take a little bit of time. There's still a massive gap. We saw the gap against Liverpool, and by the way, they played well against Liverpool for an hour or so and could have scored. And if they do score first, it's a different game. But no, I think you've, you've got every right to be happy with the way things are going this moment in time, at Arsenal. Um, I don't know if you saw this as well. Bamiyang tweeted. So this is this is after scoring two goals last night, um, and he tweeted saying hello from the finished player, and then with a photo of him celebrating. Did he really? Yeah. Well, I know, I know. He's obviously maybe still hurting ever so slightly. Well, he's got every right. He's got every right to, hasn't he? Every right to celebrate his own. Like I yeah. say, you've got to celebrate your own wins. Celebrate them where you like. Uh, Gabby Agbonho is joining us on Wednesday, hopefully, um, if he hasn't handed in his notice yet. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.